Hey guys, I have here my half rack that houses a few home servers along with several disk shelves used for Chia crypto coin farming. And specifically these disk shelves are Supermicro CSC836 uh, enclosures. And they did not come with rail kits and I decided against purchasing them because they were very costly. Alternatively, I decided to mount them using some APC rail rack shelves that are usually used for mounting UPSs. That has had one huge disadvantage, and that is that I was required to leave space between the servers because of the amount of space the actual shelf itself takes up. It was impossible to cram these enclosures together the way they are supposed to be mounted. And you can see the shelf that's holding up the server on the bottom there, and how it does protrude below the server a little bit. Uh, it does ever so slightly pass the tick mark here on the uh, server rack, um, and it's just enough that I cannot move this enclosure up against the bottom of that one. So I came across these rail kits on Newegg. This kit is made by iStar USA, and this particular version is for servers around 24 inches in length. According to the website, it has a maximum load rating of 85 pounds, and my super micro shelves with 24 drives installed weigh in at just 70 pounds. So first I need to come over here to the terminal and CD to my Chia directory, and then unmount, U-mount, all of my mounted Chia drives. So I have U-mount, Chia plot, star. Okay, some of them aren't mounted because I'm working on moving plots around. We're good to go. Now I can shut off all of these enclosures. One, two, three. Going to remove all of the drives from this enclosure to make it easier to carry. And uh, I do have them all labeled one through 16 so I know where they go back in when we're completed. Okay, so this rail slides out like this, oh, slides that way, okay. And then there's a little plastic tab here. Then you can slide this piece out the entire way. So uh, this piece is the part that will get mounted in the server rack. And then this piece is the part that will get mounted to the actual enclosure. So this is the tab that will get mounted to the server rack and that's going to attach to the rail like so. So I need to measure where exactly I need this mounted. So this piece will be up against the front lip of the server with pretty much just the thickness of the server rack itself and the bolt holding this in between uh, the front of the server and the lip here. So, so looking at the back here, that's going to put this inner rail right along uh, the center of this screw. So that's going to be my point for measuring when I go to install the uh, server part is this screw here at the back. So next I need to figure out precisely where to mount this inner rail on the server. If I mount it up too high or down too low, it's not going to fit correctly in the space allocated of the rack. Because this is a 3U server, that makes it a little bit easier. I simply need to place this rail directly in the center, exactly in the center of this server. So using this digital caliper, I can see that my server is exactly 132.7 millimeters thick. So my rails need to be mounted at exactly the 66.35 millimeter mark on that server. 66.35 millimeters. We'll line that up with the bottom of the server. Then we'll make our mark. And I'll do the same here on the other side. All right, I know it's difficult to see, but I've drawn a line straight across there in pencil, which represents the center of this enclosure where the screws will need to go to mount this inner rail. And since I'll be drilling holes into the side of this enclosure, I want to remove the hard drives that are on the inside first to avoid any vibrations or damage or anything from happening to these drives. And the rest of the components in here, we just have the power supply and some of the cabling. I'll also have to make sure I do not damage when I drill the holes. And you can see where this rail sits. Obviously, I cannot drill forward of where the hard drives mount from the front. That's a little bit unfortunate because most of the weight is fixated on the front of this enclosure, but I think having three supports, uh, three drill points to put this rack in uh, behind that will be more than sufficient. All right, so I've got my four drill locations marked. I've got one here, one here, one here, and a fourth one here. And I did go through and whack all of these holes with a center punch, so I should have no problem getting dead center. All right, now a slightly larger drill, but has them fitting just right. And I did place a washer on the bottom of this rivet just to distribute the force across the surface area of the rail a little better. Let's put the first one in here. Look at that, that came out pretty good. It looks a lot better than I was expecting actually. So uh, you actually saw me break my rivet tool there when I was installing one of those rivets and uh, Luckily, I still had the receipt. I went and returned it back to Lowe's and they only had this brand that says Arrow. 
So this is a different version of the same brand, but it still just is not, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really like it. So definitely would not recommend this tool. But now that this rail is installed, I should be able to take the outer rail and slide it right over. Look at that. I think we're almost ready to test it out. One other thing to note is I did have to Dremel off some of the original mounting tabs uh, because the rail was hitting where those tabs were. Obviously that's a change that once you do it, you can't go back. But as you can see from some of the ones in the top here, they're just bent up. I never intended to use this case in a rack when I bought it. And it's got to be 8 or 10 years old at this point. So even if those tabs were still there, this is the original revision of the Supermicro rails. And I can't find the original revision anywhere. All I can find is the revision B. So those tabs are pretty much useless to me at this point anyway. Now I can return the discs that were on the inside of the enclosure. Uh, so these brackets here with the angled end, this is the end that will mount against the server rack. And then once you have those mounted like so, uh, you'll simply set your rail. And then we have some Phillips screws and nuts here. And uh, the crumpled up instructions here want two screws per rail. So we'll use a total of four screws and four nuts. And here's what those two tabs look like mounted on the actual server rack. All right, there we go. Look at that. Those are some pretty solid rails. So now the question is whether or not our server will fit. All right, guys, this was a gigantic failure here. Um, this case is too wide for these inner rails to pick up the outer rails. I don't think it's the server rack. I'm pretty sure the super micro case is just oddly sized. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's frustrating. Looking at the original super micro rails, you can see how much thinner they are compared to the ones we installed. So I guess that thinness of the rail is designed for the larger chassis. I, I don't know. I, I didn't see that originally, and that's clearly uh, you know, a problem here. All right, guys, so I want to show you the difference here. This is a lid from a Dell PowerEdge 1950 server, and look at the difference in size. If I line it up on the left here, this server is about a half of an inch wider. You know, I don't know if there's a standard server width. I didn't Google it to look, but, uh, you know, the power edges are what I am familiar with, and this server is about a half an inch wider, which just proves that the problem was not the rails or the rack. It's the actual size of the enclosure. All right guys, so clearly I should have measured that a little bit better before I chose to purchase those rails. This has cost me about two days of my time, two days of downtime that that JBOD was offline. I'll still upload this video anyway because I think there are some interesting parts and it just further shows that when you get into DIY type projects, uh, you'll have some success and some failure. So if you've been watching this long, please hit that like button before you go and thanks for watching.